today we will talk about recurrent neural network and then we will talk about long short term memory or lstm now before starting this two concept first let me tell you what is the main application area of this two types of neural network this two networks are basically a part of deep neural network so yesterday we were talking about cnn and we know that more precisely cnn works on images or you can say that it works on color images and you have to remember one more point that is each and every network model will have its own application so you have to understand which application areas are suitable for this rnn and lstm so let's consider this project imagine you have a smart home and this smart home is having smart home security system and that uses a camera to detect motion of your front yard and you want to build a system that can predict that if someone is approaching to your front door based on the previous sequence of motion events so try to understand this point so you are going to predict something what you are going to predict that if someone is approaching to your front door and you are predicting based on the previous sequence motion of events so this is the most important point that is rnn and lstm this kind of networks works on time series data or you can say that it is precisely used for the data which has a sequence so whenever you have a sequence of data then this two networks are useful so here in this project what we are going to predict we are going to predict the motion how to predict the motion depending on the previously stored motion sequence so this is the main application area of rnn and lstm and there are several application area that is prediction problem that i have now explained then there is a one beautiful application of this rnn that is language modeling and generating text i am giving you one example so now consider one situation where we will try to learn how this rnn is applicable for language modeling and text generation this is how the rnn model will look like i will come into this but for the time being focus on language modeling so in order to perform language modeling first you have to give one input of text so here there is one input of text this is very cool and this text input will be fed into the rnn model now first i will tell you what are the different steps we have to use in order to perform language modeling and text generation using rnn then i will explain the rnn model so consider this part say we are going to perform language modeling so language modeling is nothing but taking a sequence of words as an input and we try to predict the possibility of the next word but here the input is one text but what we need we have to take sequence of words so how to create sequence of words so this is our step number 1 whenever a particular input text is given to you you have to divide this entire text into tokens token means see these are the words that i am segregating from this text so this is step number 1 means if you want to use language modeling and text generation using rnn network this part you have to perform take a text and then divide each and every text or word into tokens so this is the first step now what is the second step now the second step is you have to create training sequence 
So as RNN is a neural network kind of model, so we have to create training sequence. Now how to create this training sequence, it is important. So before creating training sequence, you have to understand what we are going to do. So basically in this step, creating training sequence, we will divide the data into training sequence where each sequence consists of fixed number of input words and target words. So this are the fixed number of input words and this are the target words. So input sequence must be selected from this token. Say I have selected the quick, brown and fox. This is our input sequence. And what is the target word? See. According to the sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So after this fox, what is the next predicted word? The next predicted word is jumps, right? So this will be the target word. Then I have to create the next training sequence. Say for next training sequence, I am selecting quick brown fox and jumps. And then what will be the target word see after jumps the target word is over so that's why here the target word is over so this is the second step so whenever you are going to create language modeling first take the text then divide it into tokens now from these tokens selectively you have to create training samples but each and every training samples will have its own tokens as well as the target word target word means after this token what is the word that we are expecting so this thing we have to remember so this is how we will create our training sequence and then we have to build the rnn model so this is how this rnn model will look like so whatever tokens we have created in the second step with the target word this words are given into the rnn network so now here the most important point is whenever we are visualizing this rnn model it looks like just a neural network but instead of showing round as a neuron i am using here box so it is the most important thing that i am going to explain so the third step is we have to build the rnn model so we have already checked how this rnn model will look like then we will train our rnn model so building rnn model means the rnn model is then constructed and it will use a recurrent layer for prediction activity now the next term is training rnn how to train an rnn the rnn model is trained using input sequence and the target sequence so this two sequence will be given in order to train the rnn model and then it will generate the text how it will generate the text so if somebody is giving input that the quick brown and then the rnn will generate the next part that is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog this part will be predicted by this rnn so i hope this application of rnn is clear to you so the first point you have to remember rnn is a special type of neural network which is a part of deep learning model this is the first point second point this rnn model or lstm model is useful when we have sequence of words not only sequence of the word if the sequence has its own dependency with the previous sequence means i cannot randomly pick any part each and every word has to maintain a proper temporal order means quick should come after the brown comes after quick so each and every token has to maintain a sequence so this rnn is useful for the application where a temporal ordering is maintained that is there will be a sequence in word this is the second point and the third point how this rnn will look like this rnn will exactly look like a neural network but it has some possible and it has some new modifications over it that we are going to discuss and the fourth point is LSTM is a modified version of RNN.
so this is the most important thing we have to remember and today we will learn what is the basic difference between lstm modeling and rnn modeling now there is one interesting topic to discuss about see whenever i am talking about recurrent neural network the network will look like this and you will find there is a feedback loop between the hidden layer so this is the input layer and this is the hidden layer and there is a feedback loop and this is the output layer but there is one confusion sometimes people confuse this concept with back propagation so now you have to understand what is the difference between recurrent neural network feedback loop between the hidden layer and back propagation so this thing you have to understand so definitely the concept of back propagation and concept of recurrence in the recurrent neural network that we will find in the hidden layer so these are the recurrent part these are not same so please pay attention to this what do you mean by back propagation see in simple words back propagation is a supervised learning algorithm why it is used it is used to train any neural network any neural network means if i am using feed forward neural network then also we can use back propagation if i am using recurrent neural network then also i can use back propagation so the first point about back propagation is it is used in training part of any kind of neural network RNN will also use back propagation mechanism and any other neural network maybe CNN may use this back propagation mechanism so what this back propagation mechanism will do i have already stated earlier but i am giving you a small recap basically it involves computing a gradient gradient of what gradient of the loss function with respect to the parameters of the neural network parameters of the neural network means weight and bias so basically whenever i am talking about back propagation it is all about a calculation of gradient and why this gradient calculation is performed this gradient calculation of the loss function is performed with respect to bias and weight factor of the network and why it is useful so basically whenever we are calculating this gradient so using the gradient we are actually updating the weight of the network so that we can minimize the loss so loss minimization is the ultimate aim of our neural network model so this loss factor can be minimized if and only if we can use this back propagation technique with respect to the neural network parameter so back propagation is used to propagate the error of the prediction from the output layer to the input layer so what is the flow of back propagation whatever output we are getting in the output layer in order to minimize the error that may incur in the output we will back propagate this error and while back propagation the flow of execution will be from output layer to input layer so this is the main agenda of back propagation now what do you mean by recurrence over here in rnn see the first difference is the flow see here the recurrence exist into the hidden layer it is not from output to input this recurrent happens in between the hidden neuron so what is recurrence so basically recurrence refers to the ability of the rnn model to maintain the hidden state since it is applicable on hidden layer it is clear that it tries to maintain some kind of hidden state so what is the meaning of maintaining hidden state i will explain it later on but for the timing just realize maintaining or preserving some amount of information between the hidden state this is the main purpose of using recurrence now there is another aspect of recurrence that is whenever we are using recurrence this hidden state is passed along from one time step 
to the next, allowing the RNN model to perform sequential or temporal dependency. So this is how the RNN model will look like. So why we need this recurrence? Because these are the hidden states of the RNN model and the main agenda of the RNN model is to maintain some sequence. So what will happen? Whenever we are giving some input, it will preserve that sequence of the input. So whenever I am at this position of the hidden layer, it will maintain the previous sequence here. Then again, it will maintain the previous sequence here. So basically the application of RNN is to maintain sequence of some word or sequence of some sound. So how to maintain this sequence? It has to maintain the sequence inside the hidden layer. So for that purpose, this recurrence concept is given or imputed into the hidden layer. So this is not similar with the backpropagation. Remember this point. So backpropagation is a supervised learning mechanism that is used in the training process of the neural network and recurrence is something which is applicable on the hidden layer in order to preserve the sequence of word or sequence of some sound in RNN. So this is the basic difference you have to remember.